and welcome to Shift Happens, Maximize Instructional Time. This session is geared for teachers in grades 6, 12 and how you can get started with using the station rotation model as part of blended learning within your classroom. If you'll go ahead and navigate to this bit.ly down here, this will have all of our resources and things for the day. So let's get started. Our targets today are to be able to define what a station rotation model is, to have a clear understanding of how that station rotation model integrates into the 612 classroom, um, and be able to plan and facilitate the station rotation model in your classroom. So what is blended learning? Um, one of the primary uh, folks who everyone refers to for blended learning is Dr. Catlin Tucker. Um, she does a phenomenal job and has a great blog, but this is one of her introduction videos on what blended learning is. So let's just take a couple minutes to watch. So today's session, we're gonna really be focusing on that rotation model. As you saw in the video, um, blended learning it does incorporate technology. So maybe you only have limited access and that's fine. Not every student has to have an access, um, access to a device at all times and you can have offline stations. But the key here is that students will rotate on site and they follow a schedule and they there is a, typically an online station and they can even rotate through things online. So these are the four different models of blended learning. And again, we're only gonna be focusing on that rotation model today. So let's take a look at this definition from the Christian Institute. Um, look, take a moment to read this and then what do you notice? Is there anything that kind of stands out to you or things as part of your instruction that you're like, oh, I'm already doing this or something that I've never thought of before? Are there words that you are somewhat familiar with, but you want to go a little bit more in depth? So just take a, a few minutes to dive into this little definition. Great. Now that you've had some time, um, you may have noticed that as part of the definition, the really the key thing is that at least one station is involved with student led online learning. Again, that's part of that blended learning. And it really allows for teachers to personalize instruction. The key behind the station rotation is that you take a whole group setting of your students and you can then shift the structure. You still have all your students there, but they may be completing different tasks through this station rotation model so that you can then really focus instruction or um, assistance or intervention or enrichment to smaller groups of students to have a, a bigger impact. Now, to go a little bit more in depth about the station rotation, you all are going to be going through this as this part of the station rotation model to learn about the station rotation model. I know that was a lot of station rotation model there, um, but you're going to be completing four stations today. And those stations are, there's going to be a teacher-led station, an ed puzzle station, a graffiti station, and a playlist station. If you click the box up at the top of the presentation, it will take you then to your interactive notebook, which has all the directions for everything as part of the stations. One of the tools that I absolutely love to help manage your um, transitions within a station rotation model is a website called Teacher Stack. Um, by going to teacherstack.com and creating an account, you have access to a lot of cool resources, but this piece right here, the station rotation is phenomenal. So I already have some things set up, of course, but you can create your own um, students and groups. You can color code them, give them a name, however you want to do that. So if two students you know should not be in the same group, you can ensure that they're not. You can create then a schedule and you can have, again, multiple different schedules because maybe your first block needs a different schedule than your fourth block. Um, but you create your different station group names. In this case, I have the four that you all saw, Meet Teacher, Graffiti Station, Playlist, and Edpuzzle. And you can have as many stations as you need. You have transition music. Um, you can use a timer. This is why I really like this. And then you have session time. So in this case, I want each station to last eight minutes and I want a transition period of one minute. So they'll have students will have 60 seconds to clean up their station and move on to the next. Once you have a 
all of those components, you can simply click Run Monday, and here you go. So then they're organized. You'll notice that I did leave Meet the Teacher blank because this gives me the opportunity to then ensure that the other three, all three groups are in their stations doing exactly what they need to do. So if there's any questions, something didn't work, whatever it was, I can go ahead and manage that, make sure we're good to go before I actually meet with a group of students. So all in the plane. So this is where, yes, you do have to plan with station rotations, but it makes it easy. Once I click start, the timer will begin. And then um, students know that they're in their station. What The other thing that I really like about the teacher stack is that once I hit start, I don't have to touch it again. So it does it for me. I can display this on my board. Students can see what's happening. Um, I don't have to get up and go change something. It's really nice. And it marks through so students know exactly where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to go over what the station directions are, and then you can have some time to explore. We'll have about eight minutes per station. And once you've completed that station and at the end of the eight minutes, you'll then rotate through to the next station. So let's start with the graffiti station. This is typically an offline station, but for this webinar purpose, we're just going to say that it is online here. Um, in this case, every student or every adult will be um, reading this article, Create Small Learning Communities with a Station Rotation. And then there, you're going to jot down your thoughts and or questions on the a chart paper. So again, this is a great way for students to interact with a first read. If you finish this before the eight minutes are up, then you have a choice of some additional articles that may interest you, um, such as Ask Yourself Why I'm Grading This, Nine Practical Tips for Setting Up Stations, and Learning Stations in the Middle School, which can also be applied to the high school level. The next station is the Edpuzzle. This is the one of the online stations. Um, by clicking on this image here, it'll take you to an Edpuzzle, which is another video from Dr. Catlin Tucker on how to integrate that station rotation model to your classroom. And the key really here is how to take what you're already doing, right? Your vertical planning, you're already doing these things with your students, but how can you shift them into more of a horizontal planning for that station rotation model? Um, station rotation model is not the thing new. We don't want to uh, put a lot of work on ourselves. So how can we take what we're already doing and shift it to maybe maximize again our instructional time? The third station here is the playlist station. This is where you get a choice. Um, you can choose one of the areas that you are the uh, that you are the instructor of or that you're interested in. If you teach more than one area, feel free to explore. But this is what a station rotation model could look like in each of these content areas. Um, and a pro tip here is that, again, these can also be organized in your learning management system, either you know Google or Canvas, whatever that may be. So if I am a social studies content area, most of these standards, I will say, are from middle school just because and they all are vertically aligned up to the um, high school content area. But here everyone will read a station rotation model overview. And then this is what it can look like if I was to lead a station rotation model in a social studies classroom. So for the first station, students would have a digital assignment to complete. Um, and then station two, there's an interactive map with conquest. And the station three, um, why explorers did it, but this could again be printed off and be an offline station. And the last is for you to think about what your classroom would look like. What's the checklist? What are some things that you would need to have in place to implement the station rotation model? The last station here is affinity mapping. So this is where every student would come to the teacher table with me, and we would take two minutes to brainstorm all of our thoughts or concerns about the station rotation model on sticky notes. And then as a group, we would then decide how these can be grouped together. Are they similar or different? And have a discussion about what this looks like within our classrooms. So some of the most common um, similarities are, you know, this, this sounds great for differentiation. This is a way that I can break really large classes up into smaller groups. Some of the typical concerns are what is behavior? How do I manage that? What does that look like for my students? Um, how, how long does it take to plan? And does it just do I have to have this different stations every day? And no, the answer to that is no. Um, some teachers utilize those station rotations maybe once a week. Some of them um, actually can have longer lasting stations. Maybe they have six stations for the week and students rotate through maybe two a day or less um, to meet that. So there's a lot of different ways. There's not this one size fits all for all the stations.
now that you've all had a chance to go through your station rotation model, we're going to take some time for you all to explore and begin planning what station rotation model can look like in your classroom. Here are some um, uh, articles and resources to really help you. There's some um, different tips from teachers, especially I really like the one about practicing rotating for seamless transitions. If you're um, really worried about behavior in your classroom, that's a great one. And then there are planning templates here, some additional sample stations, and even the rotation task card template um, that kind of helps that you can quickly uh, make for your students, and it gives those directions in an easy to use way. Now that you've had some time to explore and begin planning your station rotation model, we really do hope that this session um, met your needs and you can go and implement station rotation model with your students in the fall.